Hello everybody, welcome to Scotland. Um, I'm in full on holiday mode, I mean it's not particularly early. I've only just woken up and I have my, um, I still have my pyjamas on. Love it, I love holidays. Also this video is sponsored by Squarespace, so if you need a website, an online store or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Uh, right, so this is quite a quick video just because I'm on holiday, but basically I get lots of emails, and even this week I've had three or four of them, uh, about print sizes. And typically those emails take the shape of saying something along the lines of, um, I've got a Canon something or a Sony A something or a Fuji X whatever the camera might be, and they'll say something to the effect of, uh, I've been told that I can only print 24 inches wide with this camera, or 18 inches wide, or 30 inches wide, whatever it might be. And uh, what I typically go back with is something like, that's rubbish, it's nonsense, absolutely not. Let me explain. So if you uh, can print an image with your camera that say, six by four inches, and you're really, really happy with that image, then you can, blow that image up to basically whatever you like and also get a result that you're happy with. And that is because good, well-considered printing is not just about megapixels and resolution. It's mostly about viewing distances. So when people say to you that you can only print, say, 24 inches wide with your camera, they're making that calculation by considering something called DPI, which stands for dots per inch. Now, when you look at an image closely, um, I don't have any prints here because this obviously isn't where I live. So, um, bear with me a minute. We're gonna call this a print. So when you look at this um, print, let's call this, I don't know, eight inches by five inches, something like that. And when you look at this, the appropriate viewing distance, I would suggest, is probably about this, about a foot. Because I can see the whole image, I don't need to move my head at all to see any other parts of the image. And when you've got an image like this, because you're quite close to it, you need lots and lots of dots per inch, otherwise the image is going to look quite pixelated. So I would suggest that you print at something like 300 dots per inch, which is the figure that more often than not gets quoted for fine art printing. Now let's say like me, you have a, uh, a Panasonic G9. Now this has got a 20 megapixel sensor, and I think it produces an image that is about 5,200 pixels wide, something like that. And if you divide that by 300 for 300 dots per inch, that gives you about 17. So I can print 17 inches wide if I don't crop or I use the, the whole um, image from this sensor, I can get about 17 inches wide at 300 dots per inch. Yeah. But here's the thing, I have got images with this sensor and even sensors with much less resolution than this, which are 60, 70, 80 inches wide, and I've been really, really happy with them. And the reason, as I alluded to before, is viewing distances. So as I said, with an eight by five, you're gonna look at the image from about a foot away. Now people, a lot of the time, assume that if I want to make this image 10 times bigger, if I want a print that's 80 inches by 50 inches, then I'd need 10 times the resolution. And that's not the case, because if I had a print that was 80 inches wide in front of me like this, then I'd, I mean, it'd be like I was watching tennis. It'd be useless. That is not how you're supposed to view a photo. If I had a print that was 80 inches wide, I wouldn't be looking at it from here. I'd be looking at it from, well, all the way over there. And when that's the case, you don't need 300 dots per inch because you can't see the detail of 300 dots per inch. You can use a much lower resolution, in fact, exactly the same resolution you used for the eight x five and still get exactly the same result provided that you stood where you should be to look at that image, i.e. you can see all of the image without having to move your head. Some of you don't believe me. Do you? No problem at all, but I will ask you to do this. Next time you see a billboard in your local town or wherever you happen to see it, try and get to, I don't know, a couple of yards away from it and take a look at what you think of the image quality. And I think what you'll probably find is that the image quality on a billboard from two feet or two yards away looks horrific. And the reason for that is that it's printed at about 15 dots per inch and sometimes even less than that. I mean, you've got to remember that up until, I don't know, three or four years ago, the most common resolution for a camera, even a professional camera, was probably maybe 12 megapixels. And the files from those cameras were being used for billboards all over the world. So when you step back from that billboard to where you're supposed to be, like across the street, 100 feet away, the image looks great. The image looks exactly how it should. And it's only when you stood too close to it that you're not happy with the result. Big posters that you see at bus stops, they're typically 
50 to 100 dpi. A lot of magazines print at 150 dpi. So when you're printing, it doesn't have to be 300 dots per inch unless you're eyeballing it from a foot away because it's a small print. So yeah, that's my two cents on print sizes. I think I've spoken about that before in a video. I don't think I did a good enough job because I still get lots of questions about it. So hopefully that helps and I can send this video along to people that ask me about it. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you're not all that interested in print sizes and you've sort of zoned out through the course of that video and you're just looking at this lovely cottage, I'll link it in the description. It's really, really nice. It's done a brilliant job for us and our little tour of Scotland this week. We've not really done a tour of Scotland, actually, but we've gone and visited a few different places, as you'll see in upcoming vlogs. And this place just north of Pit Lockery has been a brilliant base for that. Uh, also, as I said at the start, this is sponsored by Squarespace. I think ironically last week, actually, I was talking about image sizes and how one of the things I loved about Squarespace was that when you upload an image, it then creates lots of other image sizes for like phones and tablets and really huge screens so you don't have to worry that someone's going to get the wrong image size when they come on a particular size of device. So that's really good. One of the other things I also really love about Squarespace is the online store functionality. So I would have absolutely no idea how to create an online store if I didn't use a service like Squarespace. It's really, really good. I've never had any hiccups from it. It links perfectly to PayPal. It links perfectly to Stripe. And for me in the past, it's worked brilliantly for calendars, for prints, for absolutely nothing. And hopefully, over the course of the next few weeks or months for my book. Uh, so yeah, if you fancy giving it a try, go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you'll get 10% off your first purchase and you'll be able to um, experiment with an online store of your own, if that's of interest. Right, I shall now go and get dressed and uh, continue with my holiday. Thanks for watching.